Hey, hey, everybody, Brad Linder back at you again with another sketch card session. So we're going to be knocking this one out pretty quick. We've got the Max. Uh, this is from Image Comics, which uh, is now DC's, uh, uh, DC under the, DC's umbrella for the Wildstorm uh, imprint. And I'm going to take a second and share this over with the channel here so we can get this knocked out. And we're going to be going from there. Uh, bear with me just a moment. In three, two, and one. There we go. Cool deal. Now, I'm going to be knocking this bad boy out. Hey, Lily, Shane, Robert. And, of course, my buddy Phil is going to show up. He always does. Um, if you don't know the Max, he, the book was published. Uh, it was a, a series by Sam Keith from Image Comics. And um, he created the character and published him through... Uh, image and what was then the Firestorm, um, not Firestorm, I, I was going to say something about Firestorm as well because I was going to look at getting some of the reprint, uh, repro stuff. But um, anyway, the Wildstorm imprint for Jim Lee's old studio that he sold off to, to uh, DC. And now it ran from, I believe, 93 until, 94, until 98, so it was five years. And uh, it even had an animated series for a while. This thing was phenomenal. Um, you may notice my minions here on my finger. I uh, was playing around with my daughter's cat, and uh, he hooked me. So we had to wrap that up. But um, anyway, just to get that out of the way so it's not a bigger distraction. But, um, yeah, he jumped up on the bed and hooked my finger, and that was it and cut it straight through uh but anyway yeah the max was a great character they had it on mtv as an enemy series for a while and uh it ran for a couple episodes and this thing is awesome man what happens was this character is a homeless guy uh trapped between dimensions okay there is a reality dimension as we know it and then there is a dream state which is an alternate reality and this guy crosses over and is a hero in one state. And in the other, he is, of course, like I said, he's homeless. So that's the big thing uh, with the Max character. He crosses over between uh, this realm and that one. And he's trying to live his life with this one uh, by doing the right thing and not becoming crazy. And uh, he was mutated into this character and stuck this way so now he crosses between the, uh, the two at uh, any given time at random without his will or approval of any of it and there is a lady by, right back here by the name of Julie Winters which is in our reality the real world his caseworker uh, she's a volunteer caseworker in the city she lives in where they're where they're at and that is his uh, care provider and she feeds clothes bails him out all that good stuff whenever he gets into trouble and um, keeps him from being locked up and, and not just in prison or jail but in an insane asylum uh, because of the actions that he does and they think he's just a crazy homeless guy and she keeps saving him out of that problem now when they're in the alternate reality he is the lord and hero of that domain and is constantly saving her so in this universe he doesn't have the relationship with her that he has over there so he's constantly trying to reignite that and deal with that trauma of not having her in his life in the same way so i always find it interesting that contrast so Great, great character. I, I've been a fan of his for years. Uh, love Sam's work. Uh, he was big for the, uh, in, in the late 80s, he was big for working on a couple of Wolverine pieces. And then all through the 90s, he did various things. Um, a lot of uh, off-the-wall Wolverine books and uh, other things as well. But primarily what I'm a fan of his for is the Wolverine stuff. So, we have that going on but anyway that that's pretty much it in a nutshell 
and you can go on um, YouTube and Vimeo. They have uh, they have the animated series on there, and you guys can check it out and see how you uh, you dig it or not. It's got kind of a heavy metal feel to it, so it's not really everybody's cup of tea. But if you get into it, it is a fun ride. Uh, it is way better than its first looks. You have to give it a chance. But uh, it was one that grew on me later. But this was the first image comic that I ever got was uh, the Max number one uh, preview. And I also had, uh, I got at the same time, I got the um, the image. Oh, what was it? Um it was those books that they did the like an anthology, a preview anthology thing, and they put him on there, and he was on the cover, and it was the first one, and they showed, um, let's see, they showed Death Blow, they showed the Max, they showed uh, Jim Lee's Death Blow, they showed Sam Keith's uh, the Max, they showed um, Rob Liefeld's uh, Wolf in that one, yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, I think Shadowhawk appeared in that one too. Um, I think Tony's Shadowhawk appeared in there as well, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, it's been a while, but, uh, you know. So, let's see. I think we've got this going on. This should be pretty quick because this is an animated style, so it's very open and um, a little more than I'm used to. It's more of the... Uh, quick line stuff so bear with me here because I don't normally draw quite as open as this is but there's not as much detail to it as what you would think and he's got these big tusk like teeth he cracks me up this is purple this is yellow and uh, his eyes are white and he has these big uh, spikes here in his he's got huge massive hands for one thing and for two is he has these really great, big, huge um, spikes. And I filled that in for some reason. Have you ever done that? You ever laid it out and then started on a point and realized, oops, you filled it in? I've done that because I draw through uh, in an animated type form, so that's why. But that, that happens. Live drawing. We'll correct it. No biggie, but um, anyway, he has these massive, massive knuckles, and when he walks, they hang from like two inches from the ground, literally, and I mean, there is nothing there except a big bulking arm, so trying to thicken that up on that side. I know it looks a little raw, but anyway and his knuckles don't turn out quite like uh, everybody else's because like I said he's got these big hands and they bulge out they're really bulbous um, so they're perfect for when he crosses over into the other realm and has to fight these strange animals and things that he has to go against really really cool stuff now here comes this hook type of uh, barb I guess we'll call it He's got this really cool spike on either hand, and it's very, very unique to the character by design because it comes out right between his fingers, and that's it. I mean, that's that's it. It's just a big, blunt spike. It's a hooked-type claw that comes out, and it's not metal. It is bone, um, but... You know, it is physically part of his hand. Uh, sometimes it does get snapped off, which is rare, but when it happens, it is uh, pretty intense. I've only seen it snapped off, I think, in two books. I think it was. Um, don't hold me to that, though, because it's been, a, like I said, it's been a while. I'll have to pull them out and look at them. And this was... Uh, a very cool suggestion. I was looking for something to draw today for you guys, and uh, Phil came on, and I popped on. I was like, man, give me a suggestion, because I said I need something, 
And he said, what about the Max? I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah. There's the answer. Which I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you very much. Because uh, it's been a little bit, you know. It's been a few days. It's been a few days. And uh, I don't have a new list out yet for stuff that I'm going to be drawing. And I thought this would be really cool. I've got a couple pieces on the sideline, but they didn't come to fruition just yet. And I didn't want to go off and go crazy with, uh, with you guys. I want to keep it simple. And uh, keep it to where I can keep on these and get them done and knock them out and move through like I have before. So, because that venom took a couple of days and it got a little, a little heavy, a little heavy. So, Sylvia, Rusty, you made it, buddy. I'm so glad you made it, man. Hey, check it out, Mr. J. Brooks. If you don't know this guy, check him out, man. His stuff is awesome. But he doesn't come on very, very often. He's kind of like a vampire. <laughs> No, Jay's awesome. He's on more during the day than I am. I tend to be a little bit later in the evening and whatnot. So, but whatever. Uh, doing a lot of work on relapse. Doing a lot of cool stuff. Had to do a little bit of a change up because um, legal got together with me and. Uh, Turned out that because everything's umbrellaed, I had to get some paperwork filed and all that. And it's just like, ah, we need to handle that. So, And what I mean by that is I had to get uh, the new logo company logo put up and register it and all that good stuff. And um, for my main primary media company that runs everything and got everything all in legal order and uh, put everything in-house and whatnot. So nothing can go awry once it's released. You can go crazy. So had to put that together. But uh which I thought all that was squared away, but it wasn't, so I had to fix it. And I've got that going on, so now I get to put my books out there and everything everything's cool. And uh it was before. I mean all the firestorm stuff's protected under firestorm, it's just I can't uh, have it all in one place. I had to move some stuff around. So I was just like, okay, cool, whatever. As long as uh, the IRS doesn't come down on me or somebody, you know, tries to rip off properties or something funky like that, we're good to go. And they were like, nope, no problem. Just sign here and here and here, and it's all done. Okay, cool. But it is what it is, man. So... I'm very happy with that. And getting this cut in here just a little bit. I like cutting in these extra ridges and stuff for uh, for diversity. I like cutting all this cool stuff in because then I get to put in the cool little ridges and stuff. And like I said, I as you guys know, if you know this already about me, if you've seen the show before, you know, I don't like to do cross hatching and things like that too much. Because it tends to get overkill, and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so then I want to tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak, and it's not good. It's not good at all. So I don't need to do that. So just kind of adding this little skull ridge in here, and then. Going to add to these teeth a little bit because he's got one heck of a ridge here. I mean, these things are huge. You know how they used to make fun of the old game show uh, teeth? You know, the gold game show host? That they'd smile and they had those big old cap teeth, bing, you know, kind of thing. And this cracks me up because it doesn't even come close with these choppers he's got. So... Yep, just kind of cutting in these nice little ridges here, putting in some detail here and there, and uh, 
trying not to overwhelm it. Like I said, I'm just trying to put in a little bit of a little more three-dimensional edge because normally the way uh, Sam would cut these out is he would put these big black pockets around his eyes and black those suckers out, man. And I don't mean kid, kidding, you know, kid glove type things either. I mean, just black them completely out. I like to leave it open a little more because it gives him a little more depth. So this is more of the way that I like to uh, go at it. Just to bring that up a little bit more and pop a little more edge in there. Like on the back side of this dome here, I'll put a little flex mark there like the back of his head. And right up here on the yellow, kind of encase that just a little. Not too much. But, because I don't want it to make it look like a helmet, because it's not. It's not at all, in fact. So, go right off this collarbone here. And a nice little ridge, like that. And then right back here, I'm going to put this little detail. Boom. Very cool. Now, this is bright yellow. Uh, it's a, it's a, almost a... A gold bond type of color it's a, almost an orange or gold yellow so is this and this is bright purple and then his eyes are white and um she is a blonde and i'm going to go right in here and i'm going to cut this down here's her neck right there and then right across here i'm going to put her shoulder and then i'm going to put the spaghetti strap for her for her top right there because she wears um very little clothing in most cases it's a little it's a little more risque than most people would like to see but uh it is what it is so that's the way she was designed and that's the way we're going to keep her now i've gone a little higher on the nose because i wanted to put it up just a little bit closer because in the comics it was a little bit closer in style so i decided to uh pull this out because this isn't the normal way that i draw women I, i'm going more on Sam's design so she would fit with the look of the Max, okay? I mean, I know this isn't quite the norm for me. And uh, she's got a stumpier round face and it's really, really bald and oval shaped. And I didn't want to go that far with it. So I took a loose adaptation and rounded it out. Happened to catch it right off the edge of that bridge though. I wish I wouldn't have done that, but it is what it is. And now, we have these really cool round eyes and she has really open eyes so really big Disney style eyes we're gonna round those out and put her massive eyelashes on top of there And when he gets mad, she's always looking off into the into the distance because she's like, whatever. She's got that that whole thing going on, where she's like, whatever. And uh, that that's always the look she has. Always, she's always blowing him off. But she's like, let's get you cleaned up and whatever, you know. And he's like, okay. And one of the most popular things that he would do is, is she would he would get into a mess and she would cuss about him saying that he was a superhero or, you know he thinks he's a superhero or something what's up with this guy i'm always having to be the one he calls and save him and uh she goes down and gets him out and then uh it's always let's get you home and get you cleaned up get you a bath get you some food and some more new clothes because he normally rips them up after a fight and he's he's walking along dragging his knuckles going okay but no bubbles this time because she wants to run him a relaxing bubble bath, which is just totally awkward. So whatever. And she's got this big ponytail that flails up. And I think I'm going to put that in too. So we're going to put that back there as well. I think that'll work. And like I said, this is going to be a, co a composition based off of my style versus his style so that's why like i said the eye goes the cheek goes way out here and the eye goes way back here kind of thing 
and uh, it's a little bit bigger than it should be because it's a little more animated like that. It's a little more reminiscent of the uh, the Max character, so and the way it looks in the comic. But this is where we're at, you guys. Um, that's pretty much it right there. In a nutshell, the Max. I'll ink him up and uh, bring him back to color him for you. And we'll do some uh, nice Copic coloring and get him knocked out. I hope you dig it. Hope you've had a great week. Hope you have a great weekend. I should be back on Saturday or Sunday. Tomorrow or Sunday should be fine uh, with another one. But if not, I will definitely see you guys back here on Monday with a new one. So I'm going to get back into regular swing of things. Doing a couple of these a week now, three or four. About two, three, maybe four. So, got a couple of podcasts coming at you this week, too. Uh, recorded five episodes yesterday. It was crazy. And uh, got a lot of new stuff coming out. It's just hang with me because between now and the 15th of May, we're going to have uh, the ball rolling and everything's going to be twisted up just here in the next couple of days. So, take care. As always, we have this rock for a limited amount of time. And it's a great party while we're here. But remember to hug somebody. Make somebody smile. Do something cool. Restock the shelves of the party for the next generation. Talk to you next time. Take care.